Good evening, my dear fangs. Welcome back or welcome to the cavern. I hope everyone enjoy their week. If not, at least it's finally the weekend. Well, for some of you, it might be. For others, it may not be. You may still be working. But hopefully you'll get a break at some point soon. I finally watched the entire first season of Guillermo del Toro's Cabin of Curiosities on Netflix, and I have to say I was not disappointed. The show reminded me of Alfred Hitchcock's Presents. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It's black and white. It's from the olden days. At least for me, it's the olden days. Every episode starts with Guillermo describing the plot line for the specific epi episode, which is kind of how Alfred Hitchcock did Alfred Hitchcock Presents. I actually loved it. I'll admit, I want that cabinet that's in the show. It's so cool. <laughs> the various hidden compartments and various treasures locked within is just amazing. So I'm going to break down each episode and explain what kind of, if I liked it, what I liked about it and all that type of stuff. I'm going to break it down. So the first episode, Lot 36, I had a feeling the callous Nick would get what was coming to him in a typical horror fashion. One thing I've noticed with all horror movies, well, at least the vast majority of them anyways, they all kill off the sinners and keep with the Christian moralities. So if the character is a terrible human being, you tend to know they're going to get killed off. And usually it's brutal. However, the way it was done in this episode was reminiscent of HP's demons, mostly because of the tendrils that were coming out of it. It just, for some reason, I instantly thought HP. Graveyard Rats was not at all what I was expecting. Um, my husband was happy to see one of his favorite actors in it, David Hewlett. If you're not familiar with him, don't feel bad. I only know he's in Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, uh, Nightmare Alley, Splice, and he's in The Shape of Water, but I honestly didn't recognize him in any of those, so not really that familiar with him, I guess you could say. But I found the episode interesting nonetheless because it does make you wonder if there are hidden tunnels beneath the graveyards or anywhere, really. It also makes you wonder what might be lurking beneath the ground we walk on. Especially if there are hidden tunnels. The autopsy was amazing. I loved this episode. It was creepy and unsettling. Part of the draw was the idea of this parasitic alien that feasts while their prey is conscious. Terrifying and disturbing, especially when this creature explains how they've been doing this for a long time. And I honestly wonder how long they could keep their host alive. Because they can force their host to move about and can honestly communicate as well. So it makes me wonder how long they could keep their host alive before killing them. And I wonder how that's efficient, if you think about it. If you keep killing your host, wouldn't it be difficult to find another one and keep finding another one? Just a thought. Uh, the outside episode I found sad because many people do not feel good in their own skin. We hate various flaws and wish we could change them. When we fix one, we find a new flaw and are never happy. It's amazing how much money people put into looking flawless or perfect than anything else, even if what we do to be flawless could be damaging, which is kind of what this showed. Because she was getting that horrible rash and no matter what her husband told her, she just wouldn't listen to him. and. As a woman, I honestly have been there many times. I don't feel good about myself, and that's partially why I use my avatar. I don't feel good in my own skin. I haven't since I was a teenager. And I think that's a lot of people. We're just not comfortable being who we are. Uh, Pigman's Model was my favorite episode. I love horror artwork. I've always been drawn to the dark artists and more macabre artwork. Some of my favorite artists are Albrecht Durer, William Blake, Bosch, and Peter Bruegel. 
I don't know if any of you are familiar with any of their work, but I'll put some links in the description if you want to check out their work, if you're interested. Uh, William Blake is not just a painter, he was also a poet, and I actually liked those two. <laughs> I like both of his works, even though he was really dark, in my opinion, but I don't know. I could be wrong. It's honestly, art is subjective. Um, art is really how it makes you feel. So the idea that Richard Pickman was painting what he saw, including the future, was kind of creepy. <laughs> um, he explains to James that the world is a terrifying place that we tend to ignore. We don't see the underlying shadows. James believed that it was Pickman's artwork that was causing the horrors around him, but it was making him more aware. So I thought it was a really well done piece. Dreams in the Witch House was beautiful and tragic. Walter did everything he could to bring his sister back and save her from death. Unfortunately, it was all for nothing because you can't bring the, da the dead back, sadly, unfortunately. We must honestly let them go and learn to go on without them, which I think is one of the hardest things to do. The viewing was my least favorite episode in the season. I found it incredibly boring and slightly trippy. The end of the episode reminded me of Doom. I don't know if any of you got that feeling, but that's what I got from that. When the creature emerges from the sewer tunnel, that's what it anyways looked like to me, and the backdrop of the city in darkness just, I don't know, it had that feeling for me. The final episode of The Murmuring was also very tragic. The couple dealing with the loss of their daughter, staying at a house where the original owner murdered her own son. Yeah, I don't think that would be a fun house to be in. It was very sad and heartbreaking. For those of you that have seen the show, which episode was your favorite? Are you hoping for another season? I know I am. I really want another one. <laughs> which was your least favorite episode if you have one? Uh... If you understood the viewing, you know, enlighten me. I didn't really care for the beginning of that episode. It was so boring for me. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> I'll admit that I am so ashamed of it, but yes. Anyways, I'm curious what stories will be told in the next season, if there is another season. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great weekend and enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to share your support. It's greatly appreciated. It means so much to me and it helps the channel and myself. Next week, I'll share my hereditary review since I forgot to cover that. Tuesday, I'll be discussing Kwanzaa since I actually don't know much about it. I just know it's an African celebration. It's about all I know. Friday, I'll discuss Santa Lucia, which is a holiday celebrated in Scandinavian countries and Italy on December 13th. If you can't wait for the upcoming content, click the bell icon to never miss a video. Take care until next time. Bye, everyone.